Good evening and welcome to the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Um, we did not meet in the month of January, so I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and the New Year is going good so far. Um, as always, on page three is our committee listing, so if you ever find that that's, if something is not correct with that, please let a staff member know. Um, at this time, do we have a motion to adopt or amend tonight's agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, our agenda will stand as written. Um, our last meeting was December 5th, which um, those minutes were emailed out earlier this week, but there are, you also have them tonight. Um, do we have a motion to adopt, correct, or reject our last meeting minutes? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. They will stand as written. And page 10 will be the attendance report. Again, if you find that that is not correct, please let a staff member know, and they will get that updated as well. Our meeting should looks like it's going to be kind of short and sweet and to the point tonight. So um, we're going to go ahead and go to the subcommittee report. The first one is the tree board. We did meet um, January 14th. We worked again on the tree ordinance. I think we've pretty much gotten that the way we want it. Um, Arbor Day is gonna be April 25th, as we've stated before, and it's gonna be at Wooten Park. Um, we did have one little mishap a little bit. We were hoping that Bell Forks was gonna be able to participate, but with testing and with their schedule, it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to. But I did talk with the principal at Clyde Irwin, Lori, ha Lori Howard, and she said that they will be more than glad to send children over mm -hmm. there. Um, they've got the flag corps, which they will do. And I um, said, you know, we'd like anything from dance and singing, um, a play, poetry, anything like that. So she's gonna meet with her teachers and they're definitely on board for participating. And we still have the outreach to the middle school and to um, the yes. high school, so we're That's hoping right. to get something there. And do you Ms. Mindy can help us with that. Do you want to go with this now? Um, well, the committee um, looked at um, the state um, has a, currently has a um, photo contest related to Arbor Day. Mm. And um, they want pretty pictures of trees um, looking good. And of course, it probably means that they might have taken those pictures at a time other than right now in order to get the tree at its, at its best and such there. And the committee entertained an idea about um, having a video challenge about what the, what the value of trees are. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're providing to you at your place there this um, Arbor Day video challenge. And we'll be putting this up and um, doing some items with the um, um, on, on our promotion and we're hoping those of you who have some connection in schools and other places can help get the word out about this um, because they can win a gift card um, we're asking that they actually post this on YouTube with a hashtag that we'd be able to recognize and so we'll know that it's been posted and there's two things about that one of it is that um, other people will get to see it immediately and we'll get to see how many people like them and how many people you know watch them and do things such as that and the other is, is that, um, you know, it kind of ensures that three to five minutes um, works out for us. And that, um, but the winning, the winning entry, as judged by the Arbor Day Committee there, will, will win a um, uh, $50 gift card. And of course, they'll have recognition at the um, Arbor Day ceremony. And um, we'll feature their video on air, too, at, um, on June 10th. There was a lot of... Um, conversation about the state photo contest it's only limit it's limited to um, it's just um, More adults. no it was no. it was just the middle school children or something right. there it was, it was a, only up to a certain that's right. yeah, age it was a level very up. narrow age right. and the the committee liked the idea of let's doing something that will have a k-12 version and we'll have an 18 plus version yeah so we'll have two mm -hmm. separate categories so we're going to get the word out over to the college, over to Coastal, and to pass some information out over there, too, as well. All right, Kat, would you like to update us about the recognition? We well, yeah, held a real short meeting. Um, rogue meeting. <laughs> what? You went rogue on us. <laughs> Whatever rogue is. We hadn't received any nominations from this uh, Mr. Pirate over there. 
We weren't there to get nope. Nobody notified us. We had to do that. <laughs> and uh, we didn't make any do any acts on waiting on nominations. One thing we do want the recognition committee at your last meeting in December, obviously you had that stormwater pre presentation and you folks indicated you wanted to send that to the recognition committee. So we're hoping we can meet in the next um, um, 60 days and, and, and hash that out and bring that back to you for, for action as it was too. So that's something we'd like to see in there. Um, Glenn, I would ask you on the full page ad that the city puts in the paper from time to time, couldn't they, you put a uh, bigger article or something there to note that to help us out as a committee Absolutely. as far as recognition of <coughs> Absolutely. and it would be wonderful to have that. Absolutely. We, we have a couple of times have done that. We don't mind doing it again and mm -hmm. pushing it out in all the mediums that we have. Can we do that too for the Absolutely. video challenge? Yes, it was actually in your utility insert. I just for you, Glenn. I opened it off and ran it. Yeah. Lisa will be happy to know you read that too. Lisa Miller is one of our media specialists and that's, that's one of her work. G10, can something be run on that? Yes. To incorporate it separately so it has more attention to it? Absolutely. All right. Linda, would you like to update us, please, on the Appearance and Partnership? Uh, the Appearance and Partnership Committee subcommittee met on January 13th. Uh, we elected to provide significant encouragement to clean up activities, and we set April for the month for those activities. And some of the act, some special activities, we encourage neighbors to be involved, youth involvement, the Jacksonville Youth Council, Coastal Carolina Environmental Club, and Carmelo with contact the Volunteer Center. Uh, our goal is to get advanced knowledge that sanitation will help all year, advanced recycling when needed. Uh, we are going to organize cleanups, get groups for early uh, publicity, encourage everyone to have to do something. Some of our ideas to clean up activity with young children, litter day in the park, uh, Sarah will help with curriculum, printed litter bags, dog nests, walk for the park, reward handouts, cleaning green pens, letters from the mayor, and cleaning green hotline. We also assign members of the committee to go to different of, of our boards to get the word out. Um, Suzanne and Linda were supposed to go to city council on the 4th, but we were not reminded. <laughs> 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 On February 20th, Grace and Willie will go to the Water and Sewer Department. On February 13th, Willie and Linda will go to the um, Tourism Department, I mean the Committee. Uh, Sarah and Linda. and Linda. No, Sarah and Grace on the 24th will go to Recreation and Park. Mm -hmm. Willie and Grace will go on the 20th to Community Development. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'm sorry, planning board on the 10th, Suzanne and Ossie. Thank you. Uh, G10 is going to do the advertising for us, some of it. Uh, we're going to post locations for the cleanup. Grace is going to do the poop bags at the Commons and Willie cigarette butts. Yes, we're hoping that we can set some times this evening when we can get with you to do the video spots um, for, for these um, for those efforts there. We do have a little bit of time for this one. <laughs> Thank you. Betty, do you have anything with education and outreach? No report. We got iced out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, and for those that are listening at home, we might mention that you went to a new schedule that allows the committees to meet in these off months and then you meet as a full committee now and this was the appropriate time to you know talk about issues amongst yourself and things that would have been we didn't have a special program for you or anything this evening because you know we, this is our first iteration under this new plan as it is but we do want you to let us know if there's certain topics that you want to talk about um, as such there you know, in, in lieu of that item there, might I just show a couple things for, um, um, and um, some slides just to bring you up to date about some things that have happened since we were last together as it was. Um, the Beirut Memorial Grove, um, construction has started on this and I hope all of you get out there, but if you're like me and you go one way basically back and forth to home, you don't always see it, you know, so, um, but we've got some people that um, are watching it for you. 
and they took some pictures out there. This was um, basically last month of the construction that was there. Um, and they were laying the irrigation that, um, that is a bonus, as we said, this was not anticipated, but because the vendor has to keep the plants going for a year, they elected as part of that insurance policy, I guess, to go ahead and put in irrigation. So this will be something the city will inherit because as you recall, the city will be taking this, this site over after it's constructed by the state. Um, the view really is nice, and it's going to be a great view from, from Highway 17 particularly, um, uh, coming into town and doing things such as that way. And it will be a great view, obviously, during October when the Beirut M Memorial Observance is routinely held there. But um, the contractor told um, 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 one of the media specialists um, just, um, I think it was this week, Basically, um, he kind of got delayed because of the weather that we all can, can feel sympathy to. And, but he believes that he'll be planting actually um, later this month and he should be out of there by the end of the month. And that's 273 trees, so that's a pretty good hunk of trees there. But that'll be a beautiful scene that'll certainly take place as a result of that. Another thing that happened since we met is that this, this, this view is no longer available to you. Um, this is this is this is now history of um, what you would have seen if you were traveling along the, um, the river and uh, you know this late um, early winter or late fall as it was and um, um, the excavators got out there and other devices and um, uh, one of the landmarks we'll have to agree about Jacksonville is no more um, and um, there were a lot of people saddened by this and some very much applauding as it was but um, it's gone and um, that's, um, that's been a real interesting um, um, change in the, in the landscape of that site. And of course, right across the um, other side, between the bridges, Jacksonville Landing um, construction started this week. And so they were taking down some of the trees that'll be in the way. It's kind of sad seeing some of the old growth trees there, but uh, you know, so too comes this, that'll be a nice park, trees, there'll be many more trees that'll be planted in, in their place as it is there. And um, this will be a great site. Um, these are some of the construction people who are going to be responsible for the dredging. Um, there's a limited time in which they can do the dredging because of the fish migration. And so this is hoping to meet that. It's imagined that um, you would basically have this project completed by September. Uh, mm -hmm. People will be able to launch boats there. Now, the project includes, um, this is a view from across the river where the old boat ramp is over to where the new boat ramp will be. Um, basically, um, you'll be able to launch a boat there. There'll be some facilities there, um, but a visitor center, the city will be responsible for that in the future. And uh, we hope that that is a place where we can welcome people to come, find out more about the community and do things such as that. And Wooten Park um, has been dedicated, and while that's not necessarily you would think on the list of things you look at, um, there was quite a lot of beautification effort that went into Wooten Park. Um, the, the tree planting out there is really wonderful. Um, Kate did leave some space for us to plant trees during Arbor Day, but this is gonna be a beautiful location to hold the Arbor Day ceremony, and I, I, I really think this is gonna be a nice place to be in the spring um, when we're out there. Now this was January 18th, and it was cold. <laughs> it was very cold out there. Um, the hot chocolate and coffee was very much appreciated out there, and the um, the speeches and such were were brief and inspirational. Um, uh, you know, learning about Dr. Wooten and the path that he took and the inspiration that he provided for this community and the legacy that he has left in in both that church and in several other things. Um, as Jerome was indicating, you know, um, uh, uh, council member Jerome Willingham indicated, you know, it was where uh, a lot of young people got a lot of bringing up and um, it was a place that was well known out there as it was. And of course here was the unveiling and of course the current pastor of, uh, of Sandy Run um, Church, Baptist Church, Missionary Baptist Church, Dr. I mean, Reverend Churchwell there was, uh, was there as a part of it with um, um, Dr. Wooten's widow was standing right there in the, in the center there. And this is what it looked like when it was unveiled, as it was there, too. So that was a very nice facility. Someone asked about the update on the street plants, the um, streetscapes that have been going. And this is what you last saw at your last meeting in December. 
that had been done and we're happy to say now that all the trees on the City Hall side have now been replaced um, with these crepe myrtles um, that um, City Parks Division has gone in and uh, removed all the vegetation and also marked out the areas there where they were. Um, the, this, this, this is going to be further improved as, as money and time allows. But um, basically, this has been so well received by the merchants in the downtown area who have indicated they very much like the idea of, of doing this. Here's what the Freedom Fountain looked like last <laughs> week, <laughs> the last week of January. And um, while you can see some of the snowy, icy stuff there, you know, basically there was a lot of ice and things there. Um, this, um, this is what it looked like that morning um, as it was coming through. Um, we, we, this was a beautiful scene as the ice constricted the flow and made the, um, the jet even higher than what it is normally. Um, but it was a beautiful sight and um, it created a little of icy problems there, but it was certainly a, uh, a, a wonderful sight to see. In that, um, those pictures, one of the things that we didn't show you was that um, we, we, we out at Jacksonville Landing, there's a lot of litter. And um, at those intersections that what you could see from that, there was a lot of cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. And you folks previously talked about the, um, the, the effort that you'd like to see done in there and keeping, the, you know, keeping your butt in the car. And I will tell you that the, the city council has heard your report um, and the city management is very much in favor of hearing what ideas we can come up with. Um, we had a long list with, um, with Betty's group and, um, and with others there talking about things that we could do. And we're hoping that we can hear a little more ideas about what you thought about having like youth and people from schools going out to areas and counting the cigarette butts at certain areas. Um, and so to see how that happens and that they can make count and give testimony as to what they have found there. Um, also that we can see other efforts by having some signage that might be placed at certain intersections that would be very visible at, um, at uh, window level um, about keeping your butts in your car and um, doing things like that and to play on those type of things there. We were wondering if any of y'all had any other ideas or things to that effect or you know, if we could just have a little bit of conversation about uh, inspiration. Because I think you'll see those pictures were pretty. And there's some pretty things that are going to happen there. Could I go ahead and take a group? Um, I've had several eighth graders that need to get their um, community service hours before the end of the year. And of course, time is Always coming about down. To do, yes. It's coming <laughs> quickly. And um, I mean, but it, I don't want them there when the construction people are there and I, they don't I don't want to take a bus, but there's maybe four or five of them that would like to meet on a Saturday and just go down and pick them up. And if I just take pictures and, I mean, that would be okay to Yes, to get with that. us and let's see if we can help you with some safety equipment and things okay. such as that and let the um, uh, let the police be aware of that um, so we're, we're there. And um, I think that'd be grand. Okay. We were hoping, too, that that intersection near your school, she's at Northwoods right. Park, um, that, um, oh gosh, I forget the name, uh, Decatur and yeah. Clifton and that. Sue. Sue, 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 Decatur mm -hmm. and Sue, where it comes together. I'm amazed at how many cigarette butts are right at that intersection there. Yeah. The street sweeper does a good job of picking them up, but it'd be nice to start seeing some reporting of just how many cigarette butts get left there. So, mm -hmm. but did you have a location in mind that you'd like to do? With that? Well, I'd like to get our students that have parents that might sit out in their cars and just smoke mm -hmm. um, while they're waiting for students to <laughs> have signs out there. And <laughs> I think that would be pretty effective. Yeah. Um, I, I, we hadn't thought about that. It would bring it to their attention. Okay. Well, we'd be happy to help you okay. do that. All right. So, yes. <laughs> I think what you were saying, the intersection like near Bosco or somewhere like where there's the yield sign coming off the cater. That may like be where, where that, I'm where thinking about. Is, yes, where the triangle is. Where the Wiggins, is. like. Yes, 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 yes. Is that Bosco then? Well, I don't yeah. know. I think Bosco okay. starts right at that intersection. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little challenge about the cater. Still the longest road in the <laughs> Right. <Yeah. laughs> but I mean, that's two areas right there. I mean, yeah. you have to wear your school out, but I mean, that would be two yeah. close spots. And I mean, they do throw them out right there, too. Yeah, I mean. right. And of course, the big ones, mm -hmm. Western and Marine Boulevard, mm -hmm. 
Undoubtedly. Uh-huh. Shady. 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 Shady Avenue <laughs> and Marine Boulevard. Um, I'm so frustrated sitting there, you know, watching folks just throw it out that I get the little license plate. And I can the street cleaner, phone. hasn't it helped tremendously? Oh, I think that that's part of what we talk about, about the adopt a parks and things like that. Our parks are really basically very clean. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's a point of, you know, do we need citizens to come help us clean them up? Well, no, basically, because we've got good people doing that. But I think it lets you have an appreciation of even if the crew goes through that moment, that afternoon, there can be something else there. And I think having that understanding of that is a good thing. And that's just like the cigarette butts. The street sweeper, as you know, it comes through and he'll get up most of them. And the deal with my favorite intersection, Cheney, they throw it in the median. The street sweeper doesn't do that. The street uh-huh. sweeper doesn't do it, whatever this street that we're all confused <laughs> right. about the name of there, you know, but Sue or Bosco or whatever. It doesn't get in that median, and I guarantee you go look, if we go right now, there'll be cigarette awesome. butts there. So, thoughts, concepts? I think, like she's talking about, putting the children out there, that's going to make them be more responsible, too, and Mama. They're going to tell Mama what to do. <laughs> and also advertising letting people know, just like that squat a little bug that came out years ago when Sarah Humphreys and them in the state, it worked because it was repetitious all the time. All the time. We were That's hoping to, to you know, if you pick those up that we could have a sign that we'll put there and said, you know, Northwoods Park picked up, you know, 172 cigarette butts mm-hmm. here last week or on a mm-hmm. date specific. Keep right, your butt in the car. I have a red big cylinder there, and every time mm-hmm. you get one, you feel it. This week we collected <laughs> this much. This week we collected this much. Yeah. A visual impact would make a big difference. Yeah. And then, you know, to do that at some of the other intersections as to what that what that cigarette butt count was mm-hmm. and such there. And that by having some stories on that, and if you have a, you know, and put so a sign so it's in the car behind that car so they can see it. If you see someone throwing out a cigarette, that's but, right. Yeah. <laughs> write down the license plate right. and go to SWAT a litter bug, you yeah. know, right. and report them. <laughs> well, it could help because it could coincide with all these new advertisements that the FDA is getting ready to come out with about student, young people and smoking. If, it, if that comes out at the same time, that's going to be, I think, a huge impact because those commercials are, are scary. Mm. I haven't seen those yet. <laughs> well, they're not out yet, but okay. they, I saw them online right. when you're looking at them, and they are. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think your connection is, is just a remarkable and wonderful one to be able to share. Is that I think that we all know Stop, Drop, and Roll was not right. successful because they taught it to a bunch of adults. Right. Successful, they taught it to a bunch of kids, yeah. and they taught parents and other people. That's true. That's true. Okay. All right. Um, the next item is the planning advisory board, which I'm the liaison for that. And each week, um, the members we receive an email as to what's going on. So I've printed those out from December 25th up through now, but it's not long. But just to give you guys a heads up to what's going on. So the Jacksonville Mall, there's the expansion, which I've mentioned before. It's going to be a 4,600 square foot addition that will be used by a retailer, and it's going to be in between Ulta and Sears. Mm. Brothers Barbecue, which um, used to be out there on Gum Branch, mm-hmm. they're relocating um, it's slightly outside the city limits um, over there by the Triangle, and it will have a drive through and all that. So they, I know they're excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Planet Fitness which is over in the New River Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's an optometrist office, which is gonna be in the building where the old Tony's was. And Mm -hmm. so that was the last spot to be filled. So there's gonna be a Chipotle, Noodles and Company, the mattress firm, and the vitamin shop, and now this optometrist office. So that that space now is is filled. Mm -hmm. Um, At the old, Buzz Junior Tattoo over there on uh, Marine Boulevard. That is now a Sweet Creations Bakery. Um, I'm not sure if it's opened yet, but I know they've gotten there. They applied for their certificate of occupancy. Um, Harvest Presbyterian out on Piney Green Road. They have submitted um, their site plan for their, it's gonna be 9,979 square foot church. And it's gonna be 
across from the Highland Crossing Shopping Center. Um, the New Bailey buildings over there, like across from El Cerro, up mm -hmm. here on 17. Uh, there's a subway that'll be <coughs> occupying one of those spaces. Um, let's see here. Lowe's Food, y'all know that's going in. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a retail building on um, Western Boulevard. It's uh, right next to the Longhorn Steakhouse, you know, <laughs> at the Western Henderson intersection there. And it's going to be a 9,500 square foot retail building. There's going to be a 49,000 square foot retail building that's going to be um, occupied by Hobby Lobby. And if I'm not, and that's going over there near um, Toys R Us. Right behind. Yeah, behind towards ours. Um, Yop Road, the what I call the new Walmart, even mm -hmm. though it's not new anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's gonna be um, how do you say it? De Divida. Davida. Davida. Okay, Onslo Dialysis Center oh, is going okay. there, mm -hmm. and they're gonna occupy a little over twelve thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. um, a medical clinic, an eye care center that is going in where I just told you right next to the Longhorn Steakhouse, mm -hmm. the retail center, it's gonna be a little bit further down, kind of closer to where the Marine um, Federal mm -hmm. Building is there on Western Extension. And where Wingman used to be mm -hmm. on yeah. Henderson, that um, they've applied for their uh, CO and that's gonna be the High Tide Restaurant and Brewery. So that is the update for what I have learned <laughs> the <last month. laughs> yeah. a lot, yeah. But there's a lot going on, so I, I just thought you guys would like to to be aware of all that. Um, are there any other board member comments? Yeah, yes. the um, bike path has fallen apart. I was there the other day, and I walked from the solar panel to just the first trash can going uh -huh. towards the base. Right, and three 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 bags of trash, and I had it stopped because I had no more bags. It's trash, trash, trash. When I guess ever since Jim left. Well, I've we been going twice a month, well, but I, I was know, out but sick for about a month, right. and boy, it, it's piled up because mm -hmm. it's. I, I mean, I, I, I was going to say I sent a letter to the base commander, just as a citizen saying, you know, we need looking for we yeah. help from you from this. I mean, this is most of it is off those flags or the right. signing Where stuff, they put the and they just throw the thing on the ground. They must be when they're doing their cans and all. This. And for the base side, it's even worse. And see if he gives any assistance. Okay. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Um, we have a number of races coming up soon in the city, and we need to make sure that they abide by the recycling rules because last year we had a number that did not put out any recycling cans and threw all the bottles in the trash, and therefore plastic bottles all went into the waste instead of into the recycling. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that when they um, apply for their permit, apply, well, I guess permits are already applied because there's one at Jacksonville in next month that they do have recycling cans out. I think there's one sponsored by Jacksonville High School because there's signs out already. Okay. But then the one that they have in May, which is the um, warrior one, that was the one last year that they had no recycling containers out, that we make sure that they um, abide by recycling rules. There also is the one coming up for the Children's yeah, Museum. Yeah, the Children's Museum. I think that's this. In March. Is that March? I can't yeah. it's March. Okay. okay. Special, it was a Special Olympics one in March, too. Okay. <clears throat> but there are a number of 5K, 10K, half mile marathons coming up, mm -hmm. so because you look at a thousand people and each one does at least two bottles. That's a lot of plastic bottles that, you know, need to be recycled. Okay. So we'll definitely look into that. Any other comments? Oh, I want to um, say one thing. Yesterday when I was at um, Northwoods, I want to put a shout out for them because I noticed that they do recycle their plastic bottles, milk bottle containers. And I also noticed that the janitors were, it looks like they were recycling their styrofoam um, trays. 
because as the kids went through the garbage, they took the trays, dumped it out, and they were stacking the trays. Mm. So I wanted to do a shout out to them for exceptional recycling. Very good. Northwoods Elementary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right. So our next meeting is going to be April 3rd. So we all need to make sure that when our while we meet with our subcommittees in March that we contact staff so that they can be there to help guide us, take notes, and all that good fun stuff. Um, so anyhow, our next meeting will be April um, 3rd at 6 o'clock. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Good night.